self-approval. That's a very challenging area. Now, why is that challenging? Ladies and gentlemen, that's where most people get stuck, an area of self-approval. That's a stage that a lot of people get there and they never move out of that area. Why? Well, for a variety of reasons. Many things can contribute to our not approving our dreams, our not feeling good enough. A lot of things can contribute to that. Many of us never live up to our potential or don't approve ourselves because we never had anybody to believe in us. Looking at some of the things that keep us from approving ourselves, that we've all done some things that we don't feel good about. Things that if we had to do those things over again, we would not do those things or we would do things differently. So part of what we must do in order to begin to move into your greatness, you got to remove a major energy block. And that is dealing with the issue of forgiveness. People that have hurt you, someone who's done you wrong, make a list and things that you have done that you, you feel bad about, that you regret, make a list. You know, maybe a time when you weren't a good father or a good mother or a good brother or sister or you, you were a bad child or you didn't do a good job or you lied or you were dishonest or you stole. No one knows this but you or something you feel good about so you know it's a real dog in me to do that. Something you just really regret. So we make a list of all those things. All of us have some of that. Somebody say there is some good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. So none of us escape. Now here's something I want you to do. I want you to become involved in an active process to get some clutter out of your life. So if there's any area in your life that you need to clean up, start working on it. I'm going home tonight to clean my closets. Any of you got any cluttered closets? Oh, raise your hand, please. Good. Let's go home. Let that be our task this week. See, the first law of the universe is order. Go home and clean the closet out. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They serve no purpose whatsoever. They're just holding and occupying a space that somebody useful, positive, nurturing, and contributing could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. So look at what is it I need to get out of my life. Just start cleaning this stuff out. Getting the drawers together, your dresser drawer, just getting stuff together, just get them together. Maybe uh, your car, I got to clean my car too, got a lot of stuff in that, live in my car, you know. Can't put anything in my trunk, I got all kind of little things back there. Two of my children back there in the trunk, you know. <laughs> Everything, stuff everywhere. So I just say, I say, hey, let me just get this together. See, whatever you have in your environment is a reflection of your consciousness. So you got all that chaos there. That represents some disorganized, cluttered section of your mind. So let's get all that out of there, all right? Work to get that out, clean that up. Anybody that you feel very strongly about, have some negative feelings about, let's look at some good reasons to forgive them. Number one, you must try and see what has happened or see things from that other person's point of view. Let's look at it from their point of view. That's, that's one area. That's number one. Then number two, Holding a grudge hurts you. It doesn't hurt them. So just for good health and peace of mind, let it go. Any feeling of resentment or anger or hatred is called to me the load of bitterness within. Every thought that we entertain produces a chemical in our brain that impacts the body's immune system. And besides, this person you're hating, they probably are not even aware of it. If someplace having a good time, <laughs> don't even know you're really hating them. You've turned up the steam, gone from dislike to hate, intense hate. And here you are killing yourself, making yourself vulnerable to various types of illnesses, putting yourself in bad health. And I say that person is not worth your sacrificing your health or one minute of peace of mind. One minute of anger robs you of 60 seconds of happiness. So decide it doesn't matter. Let it go and experience the dignity and the magnanimous sense of character of being big enough to move on and get on with your life.
letting it go so you can grow. Next step. Lack of self-acceptance, how does it show up? How does it manifest itself? See, we, all of us have greatness within us. But when you don't come to grips with your greatness and you don't work to develop it, if you're not seeking it out, if you're not finding where it is, if you're not trying to locate it, if you're not experimenting with your life to try and find out what fits for you, I'm saying that you're positioning yourself to be a miserable person, an unfulfilled person. How else do we do it? Procrastination. We just put things off over and over and over again. Why? Because we haven't accepted it. We don't feel deserving. We don't feel that we're good enough. So we sabotage ourselves by not ever taking care of business. We get real busy doing a lot of things where we don't have any time. But I'll never forget Og Mandino in the book called University of Success. He said, many of us never ever discover our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We start doing so many things, we just give our time away until we don't have any time for ourselves or any time to do the things that we want to do. And every time you put it off and move it back, oh, I'll do it one day, oh yeah, I'm going to get to it. I'm saying to you that one day you look around and there goes a year, there goes two years, there goes three years. So is there something you want to do? Do it now. Do it right now. Don't put it off. Start right now where you are. There will never be a perfect ideal time. Whatever you have going for you right now, that's enough. Work on that idea. Work on it. Work on it. Work on it. Another way in which it shows up, and that is that because of the relationships we form, people we have around us, thinking about two guys, Larry Littles. He went to Bethune-Cookman College. He was a football player at Booker T. Washington High School, where I graduated from. Larry ended up playing for the Miami Dolphins, became an all-star offensive guard. Great guy. Larry really wasn't the most talented guy in that position at Booger T. Washington High School. It was a guy named Willie Covington that was far more talented. He was stronger physically. He was faster. But Willie Covington never, ever made it out of high school. Why? Les, he started running with the wrong crowd. Big Cub is what we called him. Start running with the wrong crowd, and those people led him to the penitentiary and ultimately to a premature death. Got the word a few months ago he was shot and killed in Liberty City on 62nd Street where I was born on the floor, my twin brother and me. Willie Covington had great talent, great potential, running with the wrong crowd. Watch out with the relationships you have. What kind of person are you becoming because of the relationships that you have right now? Do those people contribute to you? Do they help you grow and develop yourself? What kind of person are you becoming? People who have not accepted greatness for themselves, these people don't study, ladies and gentlemen. These people don't study. They don't have time for personal growth and development. They don't have time to work on their minds. No, they don't have time for that. Too busy for that. People can affect us. Our peers can affect us. Our environment can affect us. Just working consciously to overcome the poverty consciousness that I was raised in. The feeling constantly of saying, Les Brown, you deserve this. There's no need for you to be afraid. It's not too good to be true. It's true because you've earned it the old-fashioned way you have worked for it. But every once in a while, it comes up when I least expect it. My heart starts beating fast, and I start questioning myself and doubting myself, and I have to catch myself. You've got to be consciously conscious. So let's look at how we can begin to evaluate our self-esteem, our self-approval. Number one, to determine the height of your self-approval, it's important that you evaluate yourself because you know you quite well, but it's almost impossible to do it totally by yourself. You must get some caring feedback. Find somebody close enough to you that has observed you or been around you that you value their opinion and ask them how do they see you? How do they rate you in terms of your self-esteem? And then compare what you have with what they say. See, there are things many times that people can see in us that we can't see because it's a blind spot. If I were to be talking to you and my breath is offensive and you don't tell me, and then I go around, not only do you know, everybody else around here know. <laughs> and then when I'm walking toward people, they say, oh, Les, I'll be right back. You know? <laughs> and I don't know why people say, well, Les, we, we thought you, we wanted you to come to the party, but you can't come. <laughs> Now, all you have to do is just tell me, Celeste, you need to goggle with some ammonia or something, you know? <laughs> have you ever smelled someone's breath and didn't tell them, raise your hand if you don't? So, 
So we all have those blind spots. We have those areas of our lives that we need to get some caring feedback. We need some coaching. We need someone to let us know that. And now why don't people just volunteer that? One, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Uh, one, they don't want to embarrass you. But see, there's some people you know, you know they don't want to hear it. They're going to argue with you. They're going to become defensive. If you're one of those people, just decide to shut up and listen. Next thing is a good barometer to check out how you feel about yourself is how well you handle compliments. When someone pays you a compliment, can you handle it well? Lady was coming down the hall and they said, Oh, what a beautiful dress you have. Oh, it's nothing. I caught it on sale. Nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't ask you, did you get that on sale? I just said, it's a beautiful dress. Can you handle compliments well? That's a good barometer about your self-esteem. Can you handle criticism well? Can you give criticism? Next thing is, what are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? What do you expect to get from your business? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? What is it that you expect from this experience, this trip, this journey that you're involved in? People that, that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from life and from others. See, a lot of people don't expect much from life. So they don't shoot for much. They're not preparing for much. A lot of people are just showing up in life. A lot of people just get up in the morning and they go through the day, they go to the job just to pull a check down watching the clock coming in. So you want to be a different kind of person as you forward your life. You want to get something out of this. If you're going to do it, it's worth your time, your energy. You've got some expectations from this. I do not let people waste my time. Someone want to meet with, meet with me, excuse me, what is this dealing with? I want to get to the bottom line. Because if it does not measure up to my expectations, I'm not going to invest my time. I don't have the luxury to waste time. I'm expecting some great things from life. And so I have to spend some time working on myself and developing myself. So examine your expectations versus your wishes. Some people wish they could do better, but some people expect to do better. Where are you on that? Next thing, let's look at what are the things we can do to increase our self-approval, our self-appreciation, our self-acceptance. Here's number one, love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Take care of you. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to love ourselves. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, to our needs, our, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority, your peace of mind. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have peace of mind, if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. A lot of us, and particularly ladies, have been groomed to be sacrificial lambs. Putting their dreams on the back burner in deference to their children's dreams or their husband's dreams or their family's dreams. And forget about themselves. And then become resentful and angry and bitter. So start taking care of yourself, looking out for you. Develop a health plan. Your health is all you got. So start taking care of you, eating nutritious meals, willing to exercise your body, taking care of this body, loving yourself. So do some good stuff for yourself on purpose. Take some time out for you. I have some good things I do for me. One of the things I enjoy that I do, I take spiritual baths. My assistant introduced me to someone called Sister Sarah who gave me my first spiritual bath. I never heard of this before. She told me about it and I said, come on, come on, Regina's spiritual bath. And um, Sue, my secretary's husband named Larry, he said, a spiritual bath for $50, I'll give you a spiritual shower. <laughs> but I play soft music. I've taped some of my favorite music. I play, I burn a candle and I have different oils that I put in the tub of hot water and I have flowers that I picked 
and I put, I like, you know, I saw her coming to America, you know, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know, they were sprinkling little flowers on the ground right now. <laughs> so it gives me a feeling of royalty. So I, I sprinkle these flowers in the water and I soak. I like doing that. And I soak and sometimes I read or just relax and enjoy the music and just cool out. That's my time for me. Put the answering service on and just block out some time for me. I'm into meditation. I've been working and, and exercising now. Just doing some things for me. Taking care of myself mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And physically. You can't develop and manifest your greatness. You can't be a high achiever if you don't feel good. You don't take care of yourself. So I'm taking care of me. And then you know what? It takes the edge off your life. It helps you to manage things rather than allowing them to manage you. Gives you more personal power to deal with stuff. Take care of you. Now here's something else I suggest for you. Become aware of what your needs are and develop compassion towards yourself despite your human defects. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. You will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You've got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right. What you don't know, mistakes that you make. It's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are going to whatever you become involved in to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? And be up front with people and tell them what you need from them. Don't assume that they know. Don't say, I thought you knew. No, tell people up front. Here's what I need from this in order for this to work for me. Be up front with your stuff. Tell them up front so they're not surprised later on. So your feelings aren't hurt later on. See, if they tell you up front they can't do it, now you know you can keep on stepping. But tell people up front, here's what I want. In order for me to play this game with you, if we're going to dance, this is what i got to get out of it. See, if you don't take care of your needs, guess what? You will always have that nagging song in the back of your mind saying, well, when do I get mine? When am I going to start enjoying this? Are we going to have a good time together? Do I get any utils out of this at all? You're going to start asking that question. Everybody's happy having a good time, but you? They say, well, we thought you were happy. How could you think that? Well, you weren't saying anything. Well, I'm saying something now. Hope you got that. <laughs> See, we're taught to be quiet and not speak up for ourselves and not to be selfish if you don't take care of you who do you think is going to take care of you who's going to look out for you better than you will no one no one's going to do that you got a business no one's going to take care of your business better than you nobody nobody anything you want to do in life you've got to take ownership of it and say hey i'm going to make this happen be willing to venture out and do something that you have fantasized about doing and you know you probably won't be good at it, but do it anyhow. Case in point, I have always wanted to sing. I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to sing a song. If I don't do nothing but just a few lines, chances are, you know. <laughs> now, I might not be a Luther Vandroff, you know. <laughs> Or an Andy Williams, you know, but it might be a little Perry Como up in there. And a little Mathis and Nat King Cole. <laughs> Next thing is avoid people and situations that upset you. Hello? <laughs> See, there's some people that know just how to push your button. They know just what to say. So, you know what? I don't even deal with them. I just avoid, excuse me. Hey, if, um, I want to talk about something. I understand, excuse me. I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> now, you might call that cowardly. 
But I'm not going to expend any energy arguing with anybody. Life is too short, ladies and gentlemen, and unpredictable. I don't want to spend my time arguing with anybody. So I avoid situations that will get me upset. I don't argue with people. I avoid things. I don't look at movies that, that frighten me. Last frightened movie I saw was The Exorcist. I never saw another one after that. I never forget going home. At that time I was married and I was blowing the horn, going up into the driveway. I said, open the door. I pull up, open the door to get out, and I said, oh, Lord, they got me. I started blowing the horn, and my wife said, unfasten your seatbelt, fool. I said, oh, all right. <laughs> that movie scared me out of my wits. So I don't look at scary movies. I'm one of the people in a scary movie like this. Tell me, tell me what's happening now. Tell me what's happening. I threw popcorn all over everybody. That girl was spitting on those people. I don't do that. No, 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 no. No, so I, I slept in the house with lights on all over the house for two weeks. I was embarrassed. My ch children said, Daddy, turn the lights off. No. So I don't do, I just avoid things. I go see comedies. I love Danny DeVito and Steve Martin. I like things that make me laugh, make me feel good. I like the little boy in me. Life is just too serious. Here's something else that can help to increase your self-esteem. Draw the line, ladies and gentlemen. There are certain things that we just go through life just taking, and at some point, you just got to draw the line and just say, enough is enough. You got to do that with yourself. Just draw the line. You know, there, see, when I, how I manage my, my food choices, I get on scale every day. If I get to a certain level, that's a crisis level. I just get down, start doing setups right there. <laughs> that's right. Look at, hey, right away. <laughs> if, I, if my income dropped to a certain level, I go crazy. I start working like, you see this callus on my ear? You see that callus right there? <laughs> that's how that callus got there. You know, my income dropped. And I made 200 calls a day as punishment. Don't you ever let this happen again. Because I'll never, never, never be broke again. So you got to draw a line. You just got to draw. There's certain things that you just don't permit. If you got negative people in your life, just one. So look here. I was talking to someone I loved very much, had a just dynamic relationship with us. So look here. I can't grow from that. If you're persistent in saying those kind of things to me, I'm saying to you right now, I won't tolerate that. And I will terminate this because I'm not going to expose myself to this type of humiliation. I don't like that. I don't like getting called in names and putting each other down. I don't like that. Come back to me, I'm sorry. No, I won't get it. So you put a nail in a hole, you make that impression, you pull a nail out, that mark is still there. That's not for God. We can't extract that from the record. So don't, don't say that to me. So we were talking about something else. Person said it again, boom, you loser. Very good. And you are too, because you just lost a very good friend. I don't choose to be around you anymore. And that was it. I said, that's cold. Maybe it is. But I get people out of my life that aren't good for me. One negative stroke is 16 times more powerful than a positive stroke. And if you have people around you who are not sensitive to who you are, and the people that can hurt you the most, ladies and gentlemen, are the people that you love, that you love. They're the ones that you're vulnerable to. They're the ones that can get to you. And if they're insensitive, I don't care who they are, See, if you don't draw the line with people, if you just let them run rampant in your life and you let things happen to you that you don't feel good about, if you continue to allow it to happen, you won't feel good about yourself. Your image of yourself will erode. So you've got to draw the line in the conditions that you find yourself in. Here's a jarring question. Why are known hells preferable to strange heavens? Why would people live in a known hell? Why do people just go to a job where they're miserable day in and day out? Why do people stay together and they're miserable, sleeping in separate rooms? 
are arguing are the only thing they have in common is paying the bills. Don't talk, don't communicate, don't share anything together. Day in and day out, as short and unpredictable that life is, being mean to each other. Why do people do that? Known hells are preferable to strange heavens because it's familiar. See, life is rough, ladies and gentlemen. It's rough and it's scary. It's scary growing. It's scary taking a chance. It's scary acting on your intuition, on your guts. It's scary. It's frightening. There are people that are tolerating things right now and they're immobilized by fear. They can see the hammer coming and they're afraid to even move because it's scary. Federal White said something. To go against the dominant thinking of your family, friends, and those people you associate with every day is perhaps the most difficult act of courage you will ever perform. See, when you start growing, when you start changing the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you respond to things, the way you use your time, when you start saying, no, I can't do that, why? You, you're too busy, you don't have the time. No, I have my own agenda. I've got something that I'm doing. Not lying to try and get out of it. Just said, no, I'm busy doing something that I want to do. Or, I don't want to do that. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not mad. Not upset about it. I just don't want to do it. Why? Well, I don't have to give you any reasons why. I don't want to do it. But listen, thank you so much for asking me. Take it easy here. Hey, I thought you were all right. Is that right? Oh, boy. <laughs> Ask me, do I care about that? So if, if people can put you on a guilt trip, they will. And use you and abuse you over and over and over again. You've got to draw the line. You have to draw the line on them. Don't go through life feeling like you're powerless. Victims are people that are powerless. You're not powerless. You are powerful. You direct the power in your life. Whatever your life is right now, it is a duplication of your consciousness. It's a result of how you have decided to use your power. That's all it is. That's not who you are. That's just a perverted use of your power that you aren't satisfied with. And you've got the power to change that. Wherever you are, how? I don't know. But I know you've got the power to do that. But you don't know what has happened to me. It really doesn't matter what has happened to you. See, the only thing that really matters is what are you going to do about it? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. You can allow it to destroy you or you can allow it to build you up. John Powell in a book called Why I'm Afraid to Tell You Who I Am and he went to get a newspaper. Guy was very discourteous to him. He was very courteous to the guy. The guy who was with him said, why would you be as courteous to this guy as you were considering how rude he was to you? He said, I'm not going to allow that man to determine how I'm going to act. That thing's that's going to happen to you in life, ladies and gentlemen. Make it okay. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. I cannot change the fact that when I asked my son to go, that I will no longer take care of him, that he became angry and perhaps hate my guts. To change the things that I can. I can change how I respond to it. I can become upset, nervous, tense about it, weak about it, or I can say, it's okay. He who cares less wins. <laughs>